you've probably had a problem and if you're not using something like this, you're not even going to know it. Well, if you've been traveling in an RV for very long, chances are you've run into an electrical problem somewhere along the way. And that electrical problem can cause you a lot of headaches, if not a lot of expense. Now, many RVs have some type of circuit protection inside of them, whether it's an auto transformer or some type of a power management system. But myself and others choose to use what I term as a external or an outboard power management system. The particular one I've used is the EMS 50 amp from Progressive Industries. The reason why I like it is it's completely remote from the RV and that means I can come out here and I can monitor this panel. This panel will tell me which lines are energized, the voltage on each line, and the amperage that I'm drawing. This particular circuit I'm using is actually a 30 amp. So I have a 30 to 50 amp dog bone connector and then I put my EMS 50 amp box and then I plug my RV into this EMS box. So the procedure is not hard to do. The, the system I use is when I first come into a campsite, I check my post, to make sure everything looks good on it, and then I will connect my progressive box to the post and then flip the breaker on. This starts the timer sequence in this, and it's kind of strange. It's a very odd number. It doesn't really matter, but it's over two minutes. And it goes through a process in which it diagnoses and checks your current, the voltage level, et cetera, before tripping the internal breaker to give your RV its power supply. I've had this report a number of different problems from incorrectly wired post, which happens more than people would admit. A lot of people say, oh, I've never had a problem. Well, guess what? You've probably had a problem, and if you're not using something like this, you're not even gonna know it. And having your wiring messed up in here is not a good thing to be connected to, whether it's for safety or whether it's actually for internal damage on your RV. It can cost you a lot of money if you've got incorrect wiring out here. This box will diagnose that, and it'll give you an error readout, or if it's really catastrophic, it'll actually disconnect you altogether, and I've had that happen. I've had power surges from lightning strikes. I've had incorrect pedestal wiring, and this little baby here has protected me. Yeah, it's several hundred dollars. If it cost me several hundred dollars to prevent a lot more damage downstream, this is really good insurance. Um, speaking of insurance, is they give you a lockup tab. If you're in you know, a bad shady neighborhood and you want to lock this to the post, go right ahead. So it's weatherproof, um, it has a rain cover here. I don't really like to leave this thing face up like this. Unfortunately, um, it's faced up, but they do have a weather cover which protects it from the elements. And if I have to, I can always turn it upside down or I can put a bucket over the top of it if it gets really nasty. So um, that's it. Uh, this was, um, this is several years old. Uh, they're really, there's really nothing to wear out on them unless they take a catastrophic hit. And then in case that happens, what's really good is you've still got the ability to unplug and get into power if you should need it. If this was a mechanical device that was permanently installed, which they do sell, they sell this box here that can be permanently wired into your RV. I personally don't recommend that. I don't like that because here's why. If, for example, you have the energy going into that box that's wired permanently in your RV, and something should take that thing out, which these do have a circuit in there that if something gets hit really hard, it'll sever that circuit and you're down for the count. You've got to order a new part and it's not hard. You take the box apart and you can replace the actual physical damaged part in there, much like a fuse. But here's the problem. If it's on your RV and you have to wait a day or two or longer to get that part, you're completely down for the count in terms of getting power into your RV, unless you're good with wiring and can bypass that yourself, which I don't choose to do. To me, it's a whole lot easier. If something happens to this box, I simply have three choices. Bypass it and deal with it later. Go out and buy another one or order the part and wait for the part and then do the repair myself. So to me, that is so much more flexible and it's, it doesn't really cost you any extra thing to do that. 
that way. And uh, it will pay off in spades at some point if you travel enough. Okay, I hope that helps you. Um, it makes me feel a lot more comfortable having this and I've helped others do that and I hope I've helped you. And um, go out and power up safely. Thanks for watching.